Praise the Lord, everybody. Hello, hello. Welcome, everybody. Welcome to our visitors. Welcome to our new subscribers. Welcome, Living Faith family. Welcome to Wednesday Online. Um, I've got some announcements to share with you real quick. Uh, uh, on December 26th, we'll be having, that will be our Christmas service. We will not be having Christmas service on Christmas Day as we've had in the past. So it'll be Christmas Day, December 26th at 10 a.m. during our regular, regular um, service time on Sunday. Also, Christmas Eve, I'll be reading a story, a Christmas story. This is Christmas Eve. I'll be reading a Christmas story to our children. So that'll be at 7 p.m. on um, Christmas Eve, December 25th. Okay. Also, our New Year's service. We're not having a New Year's Eve service, but we'll be having our regularly scheduled Sunday service at 10 a.m. on Sunday, January the 2nd. Okay, so no, no New Year's Eve service. Sorry. Also, our, our youth ministry, our Generation Next, will be uh, resuming their, uh, their, um, their gathering together on uh, starting January 9th, and it'll be every other Sunday uh, that our youth will be meeting at the same time that we'll be meeting in the sanctuary, and that'll be beginning on January 9th, 2022. So I'm so excited about that. I'm so excited about our young people getting together, and um, it's it's been a while. It's been a long time. Also, our fast begins on January 10th, from January 10th to January 30th, our 21 days of fasting. It begins on, again, January 10th to January 30th. We will be uh, having a Zoom, uh, Zoom prayer on Wednesday evenings uh, during that time. Also, we will be having Saturday morning corporate prayer at the building at 2323 Route 73 during the fast as well from 8 a.m. to 9 a.m. And you can check out our website for all of those things. Also, just a reminder that next week, the church office will be closed. That's all next week. We will be closed for Christmas. That's next week from uh, Tuesday to Thursday, which is our normal working days, Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday. But next week, we will be closed because of Christmas. Yay! Yay! All right, everybody, we're going to get into the Word of God. Father, we pray that you would just bless the time, this time together in the word. Father, I pray that you would just pierce our hearts, that you just one word from you, God, can change our lives and make our lives better, make us more productive, make us more fruitful. And so we just thank you for this time in Jesus name. Amen. Well, uh, this whole teaching started uh, with uh, 1 Timothy chapter 1, and of course, we know in 1 Timothy chapter 1, today I'm going to be talking about holding on to sound doctrine. In 1 Timothy chapter 1, of course, um, Paul told Timothy, he, he said, let me just read it to you again. These are, these, these are our, um, our base scriptures, should, should I say. Um, and uh, so uh, 1 Timothy chapter 1, verse 18, 19, and 20, it says, This charge I commit to you, son Timothy, according to the prophecies previously made concerning you, that by them you may wage a good warfare. Come on, y'all. God wants us to win. He wants us to win in every situation in life, every trial, every test. He wants us to to come through victorious. He wants us to come through strong. He wants us to come through more confident in, in him and in our, in our faith and in the word of God and the promises of God. And so Paul, as Timothy's father in the, uh, in the faith, he's telling him to do these things so that he can wage a good warfare. Having faith and a good conscience. Faith and a good conscience, which some having rejected concerning the faith have suffered shipwreck. Who in their right mind would want to suffer shipwreck? I know I wouldn't, right? Um, 
We wouldn't want shipwreck when we go out fishing. We wouldn't want a shipwreck when we go on a cruise. We don't want a shipwreck, period. But Paul is telling Timothy, look, son, if you don't hold on to these things, that your life is going to end up in a shipwreck, a life wreck. Amen. And uh, so, and then last week, I, I, uh, we looked at the fact that t uh, Paul told Timothy, he gave him two good examples. He told him about Hymenaeus and he told him about Alexander, whom I delivered to Satan that they may learn not to blaspheme. Well, who in their right mind wants to be turned over to Satan? But you know what? Um, we don't want to be kids. We don't want to be children of God that learn things the hard way. Look, help me. Tell me what to do. Tell me what to do, Paul. You know, tell me what to do in the faith so that my life doesn't end up shipwrecked. Just, just tell me what to do. I don't need to find things out the hard way. I don't need to find things out myself. You know, some people, they just, oh, I'll just do it myself. I'll just, I'll just find things out myself. Look, that is not me. And I don't think it's you either. Amen. Because that gets us into big trouble. And so he, he uses, he gives two uh, examples, Hymenaeus and Alexander. Of course, in 2 Timothy chapter 2, uh, in chapter 2, let me find that. 2 Timothy chapter 2, you can turn there. And we see that, uh, that let's see, which, which guy was it here? This is talking about... Um, Hymenaeus. And it's starting verse 14, it says, Remind them of these things, charging before the Lord not to strive about words to no profit, to the ruin of the hearers. Verse 15, Be diligent to present yourselves approved by God, a worker who does not need to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. Amen? Uh, let's see. Uh, um, let me go back. Let me look, go back to 1 Timothy. I should be in, for, uh, yeah, chapter 2, in verse 17 through 19. That's, there we go. Uh, and it says um, in 1 Timothy chapter 2, forgive me for um, 2 Timothy chapter 2, verses 17 through 19. And their message will spread like cancer. And it says, Hymenaeus and Philetus are of this sort who have strayed concerning the faith, who have strayed, or rather, concerning the truth. Look, look at this. Now, last week I had said, what happened to these men? These men obviously were in relationship to Paul. Paul was an awesome teacher, an awesome father in the faith. He received revelation from God over and over and over again. We have many books of the Bible to prove that, but what happened? And it says here in verse 18 that uh, not just uh, Hymenaeus, but Philetus, uh, they strayed concerning the truth, saying that the resurrection is already past, and they overthrow the faith of some. Nevertheless, the solid foundation of God stands, having this seal, the Lord knows or let everyone who name um, the Lord knows those who are His, and let everyone who names the name of Christ depart from iniquity. So Hymenaeus he had starting pre started preaching against the resurrection. Now we know again in Hebrews chapter six that that's one of the basic principles of our our faith of um, being in Christ. Um, is we believe in the resurrection of the dead. Oh, God, help us. If we weren't going to be raised or resurrected, now the, the Bible is clear in Thessalonians. It tells us that, uh, that we are going to uh, be resurrected when the Lord Jesus comes with a shout, with the archangel, right? And those in Christ will, uh, those who uh, sleep in Christ will rise first, right? And then we, which are alive and remain, so we will be resurrected from the dead. Uh, 1 Corinthians 15, it tells us that 
that our corruptible will put on incorruptible. So this body that is subject to death, anyway, we, we look forward to the resurrection. We, we are stuck with these mortal bodies, but the day is coming where we're going to have immortal bodies. We're going to have resurrected bodies. Amen. And we're going to rule and reign with Christ. Praise the Lord. But it says here in verse 18 that Hymenaeus, he strayed concerning the truth. And I, I shared with you also um, two examples and um, two examples, real life examples that I knew people, one person, um, you know, they, 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 they were born again. I know, I believe they were sincerely born again. I mean, they, uh, this was uh, in, in uh, church before we even started, started our ministry, started Living Faith Christian Center. And this, this person just, um, somebody got hold of them, her, she believed in salvation. She believed in Jesus Christ. I thought she believed in the word and all. I mean, her life proved that she really was converted, but something happened. Somebody got a hold of her and she started to believe some other gospel than what she was taught. Um, uh, I wrote down here Galatians chapter 1 and verses 1 through 9 where uh, it says that we're not to believe anything, any other gospel, any any man, any angel, if anybody comes to preach to you any other gospel, no, 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 no. We continue to believe in Jesus Christ. So Hymenaeus, this woman that I knew, she departed concerning the faith and she went shipwrecked. She ended up Going, becoming a Muslim. Now we know, as far as I know, Muslims are, you know, they're very regimented. They're very, um, they're very um, organized. That's not the word I'm looking for. They're very, uh, very regimented in their teaching and their learning. So somebody got a hold of her and it took her away. She departed from the faith. And this uh, same thing happened, uh, or something similar happened with uh, Alexander, where uh, Alexander caused Paul a lot of trouble. Paul said in 2 Timothy chapter 4, verses 14 through 18, he said that Alexander, the coppersmith, or the metal worker, he did him evil. And he said, God repay him for the evil that he did. So what happened? What happened to a man who obviously knew Paul, who knew the gospel, and then all of a sudden he just turned on Paul. He he uh, committed blasphemy. He started speaking evil against the gospel. Do you know anybody like that? You know, we don't want people to go in that direction. And so I think that as many people as we can help, uh, the better. So that means we have to be solid. We have to be solid in our doctrines. We have to be solid in the word of truth. Amen. Because we don't want to be like Hymenaeus. We don't want to be like Alexander. And we don't want to go off the deep end. Now, uh, I want us to, um, to look at, let's see, where should I go? 1 Timothy chapter, let me see. 1 Timothy chapter 4. 1 Timothy chapter 4, we're going to read there if you have your Bible. 1 Timothy chapter 4, and starting in verse, uh, and reading verses 1, 2, and 3. 1 Timothy chapter 4, verses 1, 2, and 3. And this will be the King James Version, the King James, uh, New King James. And it says, Now the Spirit expressly say, says that in latter times some will depart. Well, what? Some will depart from the faith, giving heed or giving attention to deceiving spirits. Deceiving spirits are spirits that teach deception. They're, they're uh, deceiving spirits. Their design, their purpose is to, is to teach doctrines that cause Christians to depart from the faith. Depart. Let me see what the Amplified Version says. It says that in latter times, some will turn away from the faith. Oh, my God. I can't even imagine 
turning away from the faith or departing from the life of faith. Remember Paul told Timothy, holding on to faith, the life of faith, the word of faith, amen? The purpose of faith and salvation. Um, he told Timothy to hold on, like, hold on. Don't let this get thing go. He told him that, look, buddy, you do not want to throw your faith overboard and you do not want to throw your good conscience overboard. Amen. So um, faith uh, and or or belief in God and belief in the life of God and everything about God and and a good conscience, they're partners, they're partners to keep us on the straight and narrow, to keep us steady. Amen. I think next week, uh, I'm going to end next week uh, so that we can just take a look at the Bible talks about three different consciences. There's a, there's a good conscience, there's an evil conscience, and there's a weak conscience. And there's, there's four, and a pure conscience. So we're just going to look at those things and then we'll, we'll be finished with this. But, but, uh, but the word of God is designed to, to enhance, to, um, to order a right, our conscience. That's what the word of God does. That's what faith in God does is it's designed to help us with our conscience. Now, Remember, conscience means your co-perception. It means your co-knower. Our conscience has been, get, been given to us by God to be a witness. It's, it's a witness for us. Even if we're just all alone, God gave us something called a conscience that even when we're all alone, the conscience is designed to teach us or to testify to us that's right or no, that's wrong right? And so it's been given to us to help us. And it says, uh, giving heed to deceiving spirits and doctrines of demons, speaking lies and hypocrisy, having their own conscience seared with a hot iron, forbidding to marry and commanding to abstain from foods which God created to be received with thanksgiving by those who believe and know the truth. And then I, I want to read further on down because basically Paul is ministering to Timothy. He tells him to hold on to sound doctrine. He tells Timothy to hold on to faith and a good conscience because, and he's talking here about, you know, we can, uh, we can get off the path when we don't hold on to sound doctrine and sound words. The Bible also says, um, and, 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 and he's, Paul is teaching Timothy, look, you have to stick to the word of God and, 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 and words will get a people, uh, get people off, off track. Uh, same thing as I mentioned to about Jimenez and Alexander and those two people that I knew, the, the one person, they believed in God. They, uh, they, they led their fa they brought their family to church they were, they served God. And then all of a sudden, can I say this? The person just got weird. They, they got weird. They, they isolated themselves. They no longer wanted to talk to, to other people in the ministry. They just got weird. And, um, so, so we, and, and at some point when you get off of the word, right, then your conscience can't help you the way that it's supposed to help you. If we turn from the faith, if we stop doing the things that God has told us to do and the things that we've learned in the word of God, then our conscience can no longer assist us in the right way because then we begin to override our conscience and we, we actually ignore our conscience, right? So, so again, a good conscience and... Um, and faith, they're partners in this life, in this life in God. And then it says in verse six of first Timothy chapter four, it says, if you instruct the brethren in these things, you will be a, a good minister of Jesus Christ, nourished in the words of faith and of a good and of good doctrine, 
which you have carefully followed. In verse 7 it says, But reject profane and old wives' fables and exercise yourself toward godliness. Amen? So we have to hold on to sound doctrine. We have to hold on to the word of God because uh, the last thing we, um, let me see in verse, let me read that in verse 3 again. Verse 3. Um, okay. Um, so, so the last thing that we want to do is to depart from the faith, holding faith and a good conscience. Well, when we depart from the faith, we are definitely headed to ruin. We are headed to ruin. I know in uh, Galatians chapter 3, Paul asked the Galatians, let me turn there. Paul asked the Galatians, he says, who has bewitched you? What in the world happened? Now, the, the Galatians, they turned away from faith and started to believe in uh in old things, to believe in the law and, uh, and to believe in works. And they just, and, and Paul said in uh, Galatians chapter 3, in verse 1, he said, Oh, foolish Galatians, uh, listen, to, listen to it in the Amplified Version. It says, Oh, you poor and silly and thoughtless and unreflecting and senseless. Wow, Paul. <laughs> and senseless Galatian, who has fascinated or bewitched you, or cast a spell over you, unto whom, right before your very eyes, Jesus Christ the Messiah was openly and graphically set forth and portrayed as crucified. Verse 2, let me ask you this one question. Did you receive the Holy Spirit as the result of obeying the law uh, and doing its works, or was it by hearing the message of the gospel and believing it? Was it from observing a law of rituals or from a message of faith? So they, so they, the Galatians had reverted and uh, they were listening to bad teaching where they started to believe that it was their works that were going to save them. And it's not works that saves us. It's faith in Jesus Christ that saves us. Amen. As a matter of fact, uh, Hebrews chapter 9 and verse 14 uh, it's talking about sac uh, animal sacrifices. And in ver uh, Hebrews chapter 9, and verse 14, it says, How much more shall the blood of Christ, who through the eternal spirit offered himself without spot to God, purge your conscience from dead works to serve the living God? God wants us. God has provided a way for us uh, by the blood of Jesus to actually purge our conscience of dead works. What is dead works? It means works that we did when we were dead men. It means works that a person did under the law. You know, the law was righteous, but because of the body, because of the flesh, the law was, well, the flesh was weak, but uh, it, it really kept men under... Um, under pressure, man, we couldn't perform the law. We couldn't keep all the law. And so, um, that, so the, the old law, the Old Testament, it wasn't, um, it couldn't save us from our sins. Amen. As a matter of fact, the law was designed uh, because man's conscience started getting so bad. The law was designed to let man know what, what he did wrong. And when he was breaking God's laws, but now the laws of God are written in our hearts and it affects our conscience. And so it says in Hebrews chapter 10 that, uh, I'm sorry, yeah, Hebrews chapter 10, verse 22, that, uh, that let us draw near with a true heart. Look, when we have a clear conscience, especially, that allows us, that enables us to draw near to God. And it says that, uh, he says, let us draw near with a true heart in full assurance of faith, full assurance that not, it's not our works, but our faith in Jesus Christ, our faith in the blood of Jesus Christ, our faith in God's mercy and love that allows us to draw near to God. And it says, having our hearts sprinkled and our hearts is the center of us. 
It's, it's the seat of everything in us. And it says, having our hearts sprinkled from an evil conscience, an evil conscience. Let me, um, let me, uh, I was going to cover this next week, but that word evil there, it means full of labors. It means full of labors. Um, and, and, um, I, I wrote something down here when I was looking up the definitions. Uh, let's see if I can find it here. Um, It means the life, um, I'm sorry, I can't find that definition there. Here we go. Uh, it's from 1 Timothy uh, chapter 3 and verse 9. But in the Amplified, it means unstained or uh, not an evil, to, for our conscience to be cleansed from uh, an evil conscience by the blood of Jesus. That means now our conscience is, is unstained from the guilt of anything. And I, I, this is so beautiful um, that God, he has provided everything for us so that we will win, so that we will experience victory in every area of our lives. And that includes, he provided that, that includes the blood of Jesus has cleansed our conscience from dead works so that we should know it, it, the Hebrews chapter 10 explains and nine it explains that the blood of bulls and goats, they couldn't do what the blood of Jesus does. Otherwise, if it did work, if the blood of those animal sacrifices did work, then they would have no more conscience of sin. It says in, in Hebrews chapter nine, but now the blood of Jesus has purged our conscience and has cleansed our conscience. It's but but if we don't hold fast, if we don't hold on to sound doctrine, if if we don't uh, we we uh, we have to make sure that we don't depart from the faith because then we revert back to those old things. We revert back to dead works like the Galatians did, and so we don't earn our salvation. You know, there's nothing that we could do. There is not. There was nothing that we could have done to save ourselves and to pay the price for the sin of mankind. And so it was only the blood of Jesus that could do that. Uh, let me see. Um, in Galatians, I'm going to uh, read to you um, Galatians chapter 1 and verses 1 through 9. And then we're, um, I'm going to close here. Galatians chapter 1, and verses 1 through 9, and it says in the, in the New King James, I'm sorry, my highlighter makes my pages stick together. It says, Paul, an apostle, not from men, nor through man, but through Jesus Christ and God the Father who raised him from the dead and all the brethren who are with me to the churches of Galatia. Grace to you and peace from God the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. I, I just I want to stop um, there. Uh, I just want to point out uh, before we finish today to point out the fact that we have to hold on to sound doctrine. Now, uh, again, the the two examples that I gave you, maybe you know some examples when they didn't stick to sound doctrine. It's just so important. It, that makes it even more important that we don't separate ourselves who are solid in the faith. We don't, that's why it's so important to, uh, to, to be in the word of God, to be part of a, a, a good church. You know, there are people, how many of you know, there are people right now, this minute, walking around now who have departed from the things that they used to believe. There are people walking around now thinking it's not necessary to go to church. They're thinking that living according to the word of God and just trusting in God, worshiping God, coming together, growing in the things of God, uh, uh, being around uh, believers that are more mature than them. There, there are those people, Christians, these days, especially with what's been going on, who have just departed from 
maybe not the faith, but they've departed from the things that they used to do. They've departed from uh, good good works, meaning uh, meaning uh, living by faith, meaning uh, maintaining a good conscience, meaning um, to Second uh, Timothy two four, uh, where it talks about that. Uh, uh, well, people will get to a point where they're not enduring sound doctrine. You, we have to endure sound doctrine. We have to continue. We have to continue to immerse ourselves in the Word of God, in in um, in in the Scriptures. Um, so we don't let we don't let this lifestyle go. That it's very dangerous. Again, uh, we don't want to depart from the faith ever. Um, we want to stick close to brethren. We, we want them to be able to check up on us. We want to always be a part of the, of the body of Christ where we're accountable to somebody because if we're not accountable to somebody, that's when we go off the deep end. That's when we head to shipwreck. And so we have to realize that um, that the enemy is a master. He's a master at deception. Uh, it says here that that uh, people will um, people will listen to depart from the faith, l listening to seducing spirits. Those are uh, those are spirits are disembodied uh, personalities. Uh, we're fighting against an enemy. Who cannot be seen but he's a master at suggestion he's a master at seduction he's a master at making things up uh, um, one of the scriptures says um, that some of them ha have some of people uh, who were in the faith have have um, departed from the faith and now they're speaking lies and hypocrisy um, they make up things you can't marry, you can't eat certain things. And the, the, the Bible says that God says all things, uh, we can eat all things, um, you know, when, when they're blessed in the word and, um, and received with thanksgiving. Uh, but we have people who are making up religions and, and uh, beliefs that are weird and they're not Bible. They're not Bible. And so it's very important for us as believers to be part of a local church is so important and that we continue to learn. We continue to learn and we don't stray from the doctrines of Christ to some other doctrines, even doctrines of demons. Amen. So uh, we want to we want to hold on to sound doctrine. Right. And we want to hold on to faith and a good conscience, which are partners in this life of faith so that we don't end up ruined. Amen. The devil's so slick. We have to be wiser than him. Gentle as doves, but we have to be wiser than him. Amen. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Father, we just thank you and we praise you. Father, I pray in Jesus' name. I pray that none of, none of us um, would be so easily deceived that we, uh, Father, we pray in Jesus' name that you would make us wise as serpents and gentle as doves. That, Father, that you would uh, point out things to us, point out people to us, point out teachings to us that will cause us to stray from the faith. Amen. So, Father, we just thank you and praise you. We thank you for your word today. Father, we thank you that as uh, Paul told Timothy, in 2 Timothy 1.13, that we should hold fast the form of sound words, which we which he has taught us and that we have heard and that we hold on to those things. In Jesus' name, amen. Praise the Lord. Well, everybody, Living Faith, if, if uh, uh, or any one of you, if you want to um, uh, uh, present God your tithe and an offering tonight, all the information is available under this video. Amen. Uh, that's the beauty of online ministry. You can um, just, you can give and pay your tithe in a snap. Amen. Praise the Lord. But I still like bringing my tithe into the storehouse. I like to worship God. And um, 
and make my confessions over my tithes and offerings. Well, Living Faith, you, you all know what I'm talking about. Well, Father, I just thank you. I praise you. Father, I call all your people under the sound of my voice. Blessed, happy, fortunate, empowered to prosper, and to be envied. And God, you are awesome. Amen. God bless you. Love you. See you soon.